DFL-1 is a high-pressure lubricant and is recommended for use on any parts subject to sliding or rotational friction. Gears, machinery slides, camshaft assemblies, piston skirts, and bearings all benefit from an application of DFL-1. Designed to be applied to rod and main bearings, DFL-1 has excellent adhesion to soft substrates as well as harder surfaces. The parts to be coated must be absolutely free of all oils, grease, moisture, dust, scale, or corrosion. To do this, a thorough wash with acetone or similar solvent will take care of most impurities. Use gloves to protect your hands. Clean the parts in a well-ventilated area away from sources of ignition, such as fire, flame, or sparks. If you suspect the part may have oil in the metal, you can pre-bake the parts at about 350 degrees before cleaning with acetone provided that the part would not be damaged by this temperature. This will burn off any oils from the machining process or from use. This should be done in a well ventilated area and do not use an oven you cook food in. Next, the parts need to be etched to create pores in the substrate for the coating to bond to. For softer metals such as aluminum or bearings, use 100 to 120 grit aluminum oxide or similar at about 20 to 30 PSI using a suction type blaster. For steel, use 100 to 120 grit aluminum oxide or similar at a higher pressure. Before spraying, the part must be thoroughly cleaned using air blast, hot water rinse, or a solvent based rinse like acetone. Do not use mineral spirits type solvents or any other method that leaves a film on the surface. Mask off any areas that should not be coated. Be sure to wear gloves to keep the surface of the part clean. Masking tape will sometimes leave a residue on the part. To avoid this, use plain paper on the surface and tape the paper to itself. You can apply the coating using an airbrush or a detail touch-up spray gun with a 1 mm or smaller nozzle size. For application, you need to protect yourself as well with gloves, safety glasses, and a respirator. Stir and shake well. You will need to disperse all solids that have settled to the bottom of the container. Adding clean ball bearings or clean small nuts to the mix will help break up the settled materials. You will want to filter the coating as you put it into the sprayer. Use sufficient air pressure for the correct operation of your spray equipment. Apply the coating in light fog passes until you have color, then stop. The minimum part temperature should be 55 degrees Fahrenheit. If it is below that, warm up the part being coated. This will give you between 1 half mil and 1 mil of coating thickness. Spray at a right angle to the part. You should check the part for complete coverage before it dries. The part should be a gray-black color. Do not apply a second coat after the coating dries. Before baking the part, be sure to remove all masking. When DFL-1 is dry, other coatings may be applied as desired to other areas of the part. For pistons, this could be coatings such as CBC-1, CBC-2, or CBX for the top of the piston. TLTD could be applied to the bottom of the piston at this time. Then all of the coatings can be cured in one bake. TFL-1 is cured in an oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Do not cure the parts in an oven you cook food in. After baking and the parts have cooled, burnish parts like bearings with green Scotch-Brite or a similar pad, so that there will only be a couple of ten thousandths of an inch of coating on the part. The parts are now ready to be installed and will now benefit from having the lubricant always present.